Hi, this is Jeannie from Four Paws Acupuncture, and it's almost time to plant a garden here on the East Coast. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some safe and natural solutions for getting rid of or repelling bugs and pests in your garden and yard that are safe for your pets. This video was created for an online class I have on Udemy, Create an Enchanting Garden. Enjoy. In this section, we will have to talk about natural pest repellents. Not a fun topic, but it must be discussed. So let's talk a little bit about insect killers. There's several types of sprays and uh, lotions and uh, liquids that will kill insects on the market. Some of them are safe, while others should not be used near people or animals or plants or anything living at all. In this section, we're going to talk about natural and safe solutions to repel pests. Sometimes, however, I realize you have to resort to using a stronger formula. You might have to bring in a professional to come in and take care of pests that you can't get rid of. And we're not going to cover that in this chapter because only you can decide when it's time to do something like that. So make sure to read the reviews online or talk to your local nursery and use caution before buying any kind of insect killer or repellent. Apple cider vinegar is a wonderful thing to keep around for pest, flying bugs, and insects. You can place a very small amount of apple cider vinegar or even white vinegar, doesn't have to be apple cider, mixed with double the amount of water in a small cup or jar. And you can keep near your house plants or inside pots or greenhouses. I put little uh, caps or little paper cups all around the house, especially in the greenhouse area with a little bit of apple cider vinegar mixed with water in it to attract those flying pests that you see, the little fruit flies and other fly things that are flying around the house to make you crazy. It really does work. Um, this will attract and kill off those pesky little flying bugs. I have some in our greenhouses and in the summer, I also put some around the garden bed too to attract the little flying gnats that are pests. So every garden has an army of uninvited pest guests, right? Rodents, fleas, mosquitoes, ticks, and other horrifying creatures that can be difficult to lure away or scare away. And if you're like me, I really don't like to kill anything unless it's absolutely, absolutely life-threatening, right? So it's best to plan ahead of time to deter these pests before they have time to build villages and cities in your garden. Fortunately, some of the floral scents that humans love are usually the ones that are repulsive to troublemakers, and we're gonna talk about those. One of my favorite herbs to plant everywhere is lavender. It is despised by rodents and insects, and in France, they use it to keep away the scorpions. This herb is really hardy, and it will reappear in your garden every year. I live in you know, Salem, Massachusetts, where it snows and it gets cold, and outside in my little tiny garden, my lavender will pop up every year. It's quite amazing, very hardy. It can also be dried, and put into sachet bags around the house or you can hang it upside down and dry and it smells so good. Lavender calms the mind and soothes the soul. So keep a little bit by your bedside and plant some in your garden to keep away those pesky pests. Garlic. So garlic not only keeps away vampires, but it keeps away most pests because they hate the odor of garlic. 
So you can plant this around the perimeter of your garden. I will put a uh, plant a little clove of gar garlic in all my pots outside to keep away pests and it protects the vegetables as well. And if you eat a lot of garlic, it also helps keep, keep the mosquitoes away from you as well. And a little bit of garlic, just a tiny little bit of garlic in your dog's food will help keep away the mosquitoes and ticks as well. Citronella. Citronella grass helps to keep away mosquitoes and it gets so big when you plant it. If you plant it in your yard or in a big pot, it really does get huge. You can find citronella essential oil spray or even candles to use in your patio or homes and also citronella incense you can find. Please do not apply essential oils directly onto your pets. Marigolds. So marigolds have a, quite the reputation. They're like known as the skunks of the plant world. And they help keep away rodents, rabbits, deers, flies, and mosquitoes. And they can be very hardy. They can grow big depending on what kind of species of marigold you have. They're, they usually live until the fall depending on the region. And the other nice thing about them is they do attract bees and even praying mantis which prey and mantis are a great bug repellent as well. Chrysanthemums, which are also known as mums, help to keep away ants and roaches and ticks, mite, and it's even said that they help reduce or inhibit bed bugs. Good thing to know, right? It's a wonderful flower to plant if you have pets prone to fleas and ticks as well. Praying mantis. Now this is an actual picture of a praying mantis that was living in our garden all last summer. And it was quite impressive to watch this creature that looked like something from a space alien movie in our garden every day. We named her Sam, by the way. So the praying mantis will eat soft-bodied creatures like mosquitoes and aphids and caterpillars. They're very nasty. They, will, they, they really are scary when you watch them attack a bug. They will eat beetles and grasshoppers and crickets and any kind of other pest, even if it's not considered a pest to you, they will eat it. And unfortunately, they will even... Uh, eat butterflies and beads. So you have to be really careful. If you see a praying mantis in your garden, we've saved several butterflies and bees from our, our praying mantis, Sam, on several occasions. We just would take a little piece of paper, put the praying mantis on it, and move it to another plant if there was a monarch butterfly or a bee in the plant next to it. They're fascinating to watch. I don't know how you attract them, honestly, but a few appeared in our garden and we were quite grateful to have it. Ladybugs. Now everyone knows that ladybugs, if you see one, it's good luck, right? Make a wish. And they eat aphids, a type of small wingless bug that feeds on plants and plant tissues. And they also transmit virus to your plants. So we want to get rid of those. And an adult ladybug can consume hundreds of these every day. Usually ladybugs will find your garden but you can also buy ladybugs sold in garden shops and they come like in a little container with a little screen over top of it and you take them home and you put them out in your garden and they fly all over the place. They are quite impressive and they're so fun to watch. Dragonflies. We have a whole section on how to attract dragonflies in this class, so check that out if you're interested. Dragonflies will eat mosquitoes. So they're not only fun to watch and they're gorgeous, but they do serve a purpose. Okay, we have to talk about rodents and rats, which I really don't want to. Sometimes sprinkling cat litter from a cat box that's been used around the perimeter of your garden, basement, or areas that rodents hang out and play can deter them. Sometimes not. It will depend. 
If that's not strong enough, you can try Coyote and Fox urine crystals, which you can find at your hardware store. Sometimes rodents are attracted to your garden because of the bird seed dropped by your feeders or uh, if you're feeding squirrels or other creatures out there, you may attract uh, rats out there as well. You may have to stop feeding the birds for a while or switch to feeding the birds suet instead or move the feeders to a different location. Let's talk about cats. You may have heard me tell this story in another section of this class or another class I do. Having a cat indoors or out will definitely help keep rats in or out of your house, right? If you have an outdoor cat, it's going to be on high alert hunting the rodents. You want to make sure though, if you're feeding the birds, that your bird feeders are not around where your outdoor cat is hanging out because you don't want the birds to be part of the hunt. Last year, uh, we had some neighbors, this is the condensed version of the story, who never took out their trash. And when they moved out, the landlord started taking the trash out of the basement of the home. And guess what came with it? Hordes of rats in the neighborhood. It was like something out of a Dickens movie. We tried everything. I planted every flower, cat litter. I did everything in this class that we could possibly think of, but there was too many of them. And unfortunately, the neighbors were not uh, taking out their trash, so it just kept happening. We took in all our bird feeders, we stopped feeding the birds, the squirrels, etc. And lo and behold, a miracle happened. An outdoor cat who we do not own started hanging out at our place, and this is her picture. We named her Freya Le Fay. And since she has started hanging out, we feed her every day, we give her water, we play with her. We have no rats, not one rat. So, it took a miracle, the rats are gone, the neighbors are gone, and we're all very, very happy. So when in doubt, be nice to cats. Well, not even if you're in doubt, always be nice to cats, but especially ones that save you from the rats. If all else fails with the rats and you don't wanna call an exterminator because they do cost a lot of money, you could do a novena to St. Gertrude of Nivelle the patron saint of cats, crazy cat ladies, gardeners, and rodent infestations. Her feast day is March 17th. Thanks so much for watching. For more information on holistic pet services, books, and our online classes, please visit fourpawsacupuncture.com. Thanks and have a pawsome day.